Welcome to AG Horrors, where chilling tales meet true terrors. I am thrilled to have our loyal followers back and extend a warm welcome to our new visitors. Your interactions fuel our nightmares, so don't forget to like, share, and leave a bone-chilling comment with your own horror encounters. And if you dare, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you will never miss a spine-tingling upload. But before we start, I wanted to take a moment to reach out to you all, because I've noticed that there hasn't been much engagement or interaction lately, especially on my YouTube channel. Your support really means the world to me. Creating content and sharing it with you is something I'm truly passionate about. Your likes, comments, and shares not only motivate me, but also help my channel grow. So, if you haven't already, please take a moment to check out my YouTube channel. Also, if there's anything specific you'd like to see more of, or if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Your input is incredibly valuable to me, and I want to create content that resonates with you. Thank you all for being a part of this journey with me. And now, let's dive into the darkness together. When I was young, my family lived in a house that was definitely haunted. I'll start by saying that I consider myself a very rational person and am naturally skeptical. I didn't grow up in a religious or supernatural household, and if I hadn't witnessed these events firsthand, I'm sure I'd be a disbeliever today. The house was built in 1912, and from the outside, it appeared perfectly normal. However, the moment I stepped inside, I felt an inexplicable unease. My sister and I shared a room upstairs. One day, while sitting on my bed, I faced the doorway, which had one of those accordion doors that clicked shut and had a gap of about two feet at the bottom. At the time, only my mom and I were home, with her downstairs. I heard the floor creak as though someone was walking towards my room, and then I saw a white, misty figure pass by my door. I initially thought it was my mom bringing laundry up and waited for her feet to appear under the door. When they didn't, I looked through the gap and saw no one. There was no draft or any logical explanation for the sighting. I definitely saw something move past my door. Another incident happened when I was alone in my room while my family was downstairs. There was a wardrobe by the door with a lamp on top. Suddenly, the lamp began to rock violently. Terrified, I ran downstairs to my family, who could clearly see I was shaken. I told them what had happened, and they exchanged worried looks. Later, I learned they had been trying to shield me from the house's paranormal activities. On a different day, during summer, my sister and I were in the living room. We had an air conditioner in the kitchen window, but my dad had turned off the breaker to complete wiring for a new garage he was building cutting all electricity to the house. Out of nowhere, the air conditioner turned on by itself. My sister and I were startled and ran outside. When we told our parents, my dad insisted it was impossible due to the lack of electricity. We had no explanation for it. One time, while I was in my room, I had left a large fan on deliberately, as it wasn't hot. After a shower, I came back to find the fan had been switched off. I felt uneasy, knowing I'd left it on. I asked my mom and sister if they had been upstairs, but they hadn't, leaving no explanation for the fan being turned off. Back in the days when we recorded songs on cassette tapes, I accidentally left the recording running. When I played it back, there were sounds of a man and a woman arguing, though there was no one else in the room at the time. At night, I would see what I now know were probably orbs. Tiny lights similar to static electricity. At the time, I didn't understand what they were, and they frightened me. I'd run to my mom, who would dismiss it as my eyes playing tricks on me. I'd hide under the covers to escape the unsettling sights. There was always a spirit that seemed to stand in the corner of my room, watching us. After we moved out, I mentioned to my mom that our new house felt much happier and less oppressive. I described how our old house had a heavy atmosphere and made me feel watched. She finally admitted that the house had been haunted, and they had tried to protect me from it because I was the youngest. I described two specific ghosts to her, a female spirit who often stood in the corner of my room, and a male spirit in my brother's room. I detailed their attire and presence. My descriptions were fairly accurate, though the woman actually wore a dark veil, and the man had no legs, which is why I thought he was always sitting. I also had recurring dreams of a little girl in a white nightgown crying in the hallway because the house was on fire. 
This made me paranoid about fires, and I frequently checked the electrical outlets to ensure safety. While working at the local library, I discovered that before our house was built, there was a hotel on the same site that burned down in the late 1800s, killing many people. My dad was the only one who didn't experience anything paranormal, and initially thought my mom might be imagining things. It wasn't until my siblings and I shared our experiences, especially the lamp incident, that he began to believe something was wrong with the house. My brother, who worked late nights, would hear someone calling his name in the dark house, only to find no one there when he checked. This made him avoid sleeping there, opting instead to stay at friends or his girlfriend's houses. My sister and I shared a room where we frequently encountered the female ghost in black. One night, my sister woke up to find someone holding her hand. Thinking it was me, she looked over and saw me asleep, only to find the figure gone. She now always sleeps with her head under the covers and her arms tucked in. My mom experienced many encounters and believed there were at least five spirits in the house, plus others passing through. In our basement, there was an old cold room, which she thought was a spirit portal. She speculated that previous residents might have engaged in occult practices, which could have invited dark entities. My mom was sensitive to spirits and had interactions with them. She felt the protective female ghost was the one communicating with her and possibly shielding me from others. On one occasion, my mom fell while descending the basement stairs, but felt a hand push her back upright without seeing anyone. Another time, while vacuuming my brother's room, she heard the vacuum start and move across the floor while she was downstairs answering the phone. By the time she returned, the vacuum had stopped, and she was alone at home. We also had issues with phantom phone calls on our landline. The phone would ring with no one on the line or with static, as if there was a muffled voice. Despite multiple checks by the phone company, they found no issues. The situation escalated when we received calls referencing my dad leaving for work, which alarmed my mom. The police attempted to trace the calls but were unsuccessful. After moving, the calls stopped, and we never had any issues again. Before we moved, my mom was concerned that the spirits might follow us. One morning, she found an old Bible beside her bed with a highlighted passage that read, This house will be my home forevermore. Thankfully, they didn't follow us. I'm now very sensitive to spirits and have had other experiences throughout my life. I hated that old house but I'm grateful for the experience because it confirmed for me that spirits do continue on after death in some form. My wife and I have been in the process of house hunting for several months now. It's become our routine to spend weekends exploring potential new homes with our realtor. This past Saturday, we came across a property in a pleasant neighborhood that was priced reasonably, so we decided to visit it the following day. On Sunday morning, we arrived at the house around 10 a.m. to meet our realtor and start the tour. From the outside, the house looked charming and well-maintained, but as soon as we stepped inside, it was clear it had been lived in by elderly occupants. The interior was decorated with dated wallpaper and color schemes, and there was a stair chair, a powered lift, installed along the staircase leading to the basement. We began our tour on the first floor, moving through the kitchen and various bedrooms. Everything seemed fairly decent and well kept. Eventually, we reached a room that appeared to have been used as a craft room. It featured built-in shelving and a desk, which would become significant later on. Having explored the first floor, we decided to check out the basement. It's worth noting that the basement lights were out, likely due to some flipped breakers since other rooms also had non-functional lights. The basement was divided into two distinct areas. To the left, there was an older finished section, and to the right, an unfinished utility area. Initially, we all went to the right side where I started inspecting the water softener system and the shelving for storage. My wife, curious about the finished section, headed to the left. After a brief moment, I heard her voice expressing reluctance about entering the room, which I initially took as a playful reaction to the dark, somewhat musty space. The realtor followed her lead, commenting that she wasn't comfortable going in either. I thought they were just feeding off each other's apprehension about the dimly lit room. Undeterred, I decided to investigate the finished room myself. Armed with my phone's flashlight turned up to its maximum brightness, 
I entered the room with confidence. However, within just a few steps, I was abruptly overwhelmed by a sense of intense anxiety. It was as though a heavy, invisible pressure was pushing down on me, making me feel physically tense and unsettled. Despite having no initial reservations, the feeling of discomfort and dread was immediate and profound. It was as if I had crossed into a space where I was clearly not welcome. The darkness seemed almost impenetrable, with only a faint, soft glow coming from a small window at the far end of the room due to the overcast daylight outside. My anxiety quickly escalated, and I felt a wave of nausea. I couldn't stand being in that room any longer. I swiftly retreated to the base of the stairs and suggested we all head back upstairs. Once outside, in the backyard, we felt compelled to discuss our experiences. My wife shared that she had felt a physical push on her shoulders as she tried to enter the room. She described it as a force that actively prevented her from stepping inside, which was why she made the comment about not being able to go in. The realtor also reported a similar feeling of anxiety and an unmistakable sense of not being welcome in that room. As we were preparing to leave, closing shades and turning off lights, our realtor noticed a piece of yellow lace hanging from my wife's sweater. Normally this wouldn't have seemed particularly alarming, and static cling might have been the likely culprit. However, given the unsettling experiences we had just encountered, it took on a more sinister tone. The realtor decided to leave the lace in the old craft room, wanting to avoid bringing anything from that house home with us. We locked up the house, and continued to discuss the eerie events as we stood in the driveway. That night, as I was falling asleep, I found myself in that twilight state between waking and dreaming. I had a brief, unsettling dream where I was back in that house, standing at the top of the stairs. To my horror, the electric stair chair began to descend on its own. It felt as though it was beckoning me back into the basement, and I woke up abruptly, feeling a lingering sense of unease. Despite my generally skeptical nature and belief that most phenomena have rational explanations, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more to our experience. After some reflection, I came to the conclusion that the house might have been inhabited by two distinct entities, an old man and an old woman. I suspect that the elderly woman had a presence that made the upper floor feel warm and inviting, which might explain the yellow lace on my wife's sweater. I imagine she had an influence over the more welcoming parts of the house. In contrast, the basement seemed to be the domain of the old man, who clearly didn't appreciate unannounced visitors. His presence gave off a strong sense of rejection and discomfort, more of a get-out-of-my-space attitude than anything harmful. No matter the actual nature of what we encountered, or the intentions of any entities present, we've decided not to pursue an offer on the house. The experience left us unsettled and while I remain open to the possibility of the paranormal. This encounter has made us cautious about moving forward with that particular property. This was the first and last time I ever went to a haunted house attraction. I live in Fort Worth, Texas, where there's a big haunted house event every year. This year, a few friends decided they wanted to check it out, and I figured it was finally time for me to experience a haunted house. For some context, my troubled childhood left me with PTSD, but I'll explain more about that later. It was a weekend, so no one wanted to go without having a few drinks. My friend Noah hosted a pregame at his place for us, six of us in total, three guys, two of their girlfriends, and me. We smoked and drank in Noah's backyard, thinking it would make the haunted house experience more fun. We even bought our tickets online while we were pregaming. I don't usually smoke weed because it tends to make me paranoid, but I decided to give it another try that night. I felt pretty good, and the combination of alcohol and weed seemed to mellow out my usual anxieties. Eventually, we took an Uber to the attraction, which was about 20 minutes from Noah's place. There was a half-hour wait in line, and the place was packed. We chatted with the people in front of us while I was pretty cross-faded but still aware of everything going on. As we reached the front of the line, I began to feel a bit dizzy, but I didn't say anything. Once inside the haunted house, the experience was overwhelming right from the start. The actors were intense, and the atmosphere heightened my anxiety. I was starting to realize that being high wasn't helping, and was actually making things worse. 
One of the actors seemed to notice how scared I looked and decided to focus on me. He got right in my face, shouting and making noises. I was internally panicking but tried to keep my composure. The haunted house seemed to go on forever, and each jump scare felt like it was about to make me lose it. The flashing lights and fog only added to the surreal and frightening atmosphere. Then we entered a room bathed in an eerie red glow. A man in a suit and top hat, covered in fake blood, was yelling at us as part of the act. But in the corner of the room was someone who didn't seem to be part of the show. He was just standing there, staring directly at me. It took me a moment to recognize the face. My father's face. I screamed in terror as every hair on my body stood on end. The room fell silent, and my friends initially thought I was joking. When they saw I was serious, one of the girls asked what was wrong. I pointed to the corner, but the figure was gone. My friends and the actor were confused. They knew about my difficult past, so they understood I wasn't making it up. One of my friends said that the actor had asked if I was okay. I was in a full-blown panic attack, shouting that I wanted to leave. Noah took me out through a side exit and stayed with me while the others finished the attraction. I didn't want to make everyone leave early, especially since the tickets weren't cheap. Outside, Noah tried to reassure me that it was just a hallucination and not really my father. My father had been abusive to my siblings and me, and he left us when I was 10. My close friends knew some of this background, so I didn't need to explain it to Noah in detail. When the others were done, we went to a nearby Wendy's where I tried to calm down with some food. I was embarrassed but my friends didn't judge me openly. I went home earlier than the rest, not wanting to spoil their night. When I got home, I fell asleep almost instantly. However, because of how drunk and high I was, I had a nightmare about the haunted house scene and my father. In the dream, he was standing in the corner of the room, calling my name. I woke up to find him actually standing over my bed. He was a terrifying, towering figure, nearly nine feet tall, bending in unnatural ways. It took me a moment to fully grasp what I was seeing, and then I screamed again. My mom rushed in, turned on the lights, and the apparition vanished. My heart was racing, and I was in tears, telling my mom I had seen dad. It was one of the most traumatic nights of my adult life. Since then, I've avoided weed and other substances, sticking to only light alcohol, and I have no intention of ever visiting a haunted house again. If you've experienced a terrifying event or have a horror story to tell, we at AG Horrors want to hear from you. Share your experiences with us and let's uncover the mysteries hiding in the shadows together. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more spine-chilling stories like this one.